Oh, we are live, comrades. So we can start. Dear friends and comrades, welcome you all to the continuing series of lectures organized by the Central Committee of the Communist Party of India Marxist. My topic of lecture is alternate policies of the left Kerala example. I shall try to explain how the LDF government is providing relief to the people and strive to project and implement alternative policies within the existing limitations. In the end of my lecture, I shall also try to deal with the united move of the Congress, the BJP, the extremist elements, both in the majority and minority communities, and the right-wing media in Kerala to subvert the LDF government and its growing prestige. The LDF government in Kerala has now entered its fifth year of government. It is attempting to project and implement alternative policies centered around the interest of the common people, the workers, the agriculture workers, the peasants, the middle class employees, and other toiling sections of people. The policies pursued by the LDF government are different from the neoliberal economic policies aggressively pursued by the BJP government at the center. The present LDF government is proudly following the great legacy of the left-led governments in Kerala, West Bengal, and Tripura. The LDF government in Kerala is trying to strengthen and widen the historic achievements in the social sectors. The government is using these achievements as the foundation for major growth in the productive sectors, agriculture, and industries. The LDF government had to face various challenges during the past four-year period. The cyclone ca called Oki did havoc in the seashore regions in Kerala on 2017. Then the unprecedented heavy rains and floods in 2018. It is estimated that the damage caused by the floods will be about 31,000 crores of rupees. Again, heavy rains caused damage to the economy in Kerala in 2019. The Nipah virus outbreak in Kerala happened in 2018, also had its adverse impact. The spread of COVID-19 pandemic, the lockdown, and other control measures have serious adverse impact on the economy. In addition to this, recurring natural calamities, pandemics, the LDF government had to face various other problems. The LDF government inherited from the UDF government a legacy of stagnant revenue income and rising revenue expenditure. The demonetization in November 2018 had caused a big setback for the economy and the income of the workforce in Kerala. In Kerala, a large chunk of the workforce are in the traditional industries such as choir, cashew, handlooms, and small-scale fisheries. Now the central government is taking an unhelpful attitude to the state governments. They have reduced the borrowing limits of the state governments. The central government is also not paying the compensation for the loans sustained to the states due to the implementation of the goods and services tax. The aggressive pursuit of the neoliberal economic policies by the central government is also 
adding new difficulties for the state government. Despite all these challenges and hostile policy atmosphere, the state has been able to attain a GDP growth of 7.2% per annum compared to the 4.9% per annum during the UDF regime. It's a matter of pride for the LDF government. Firstly, I shall try to explain the alternative policies pursued by the government in the productive sectors in agriculture and industries. When the LDF government formed, when the LDF government was formed in 2016, the agricultural sector was in a state of total collapse. The peasants are keeping large extent of land barren because of the loss making nature of the cultivation, particularly paddy cultivation in Kerala. No new investments are coming to the agri agricultural sector. The peasants are not making use of the science and technology for increasing production and productivity. There is also a shortage of labor because the agricultural workers have no security of job and regular income. The young generation is not coming to the agricultural se sector for cultivation. So the agrarian situation was disappointing. But the LDF government made many interventions in the agricultural sector to help the peasants and agricultural workers. The LDF government's interventions help to increase productivity and production in agriculture through scientific farming. At the All India level, the central government is taking steps one after another to stifle peasant agriculture in order to corporatize the agricultural sector. The three ordinances passed by the central government was meant for this purpose. But the LDF government is providing our help to strengthen peasant agriculture. When the LDF government was formed, the area under paddy cultivation and the production was declining. Due to the intervention of the LDF government, the area under paddy cultivation as well as the production increased. This has happened despite the recurrent floods and heavy rainfalls. There is a big jump in vegetable production during this particular period. In 2015-16, when the LDF formed the government, vegetable production was 6.28 lakhs of metric ton. But during the four-year period, it doubled and reached the level of 15 lakh metric tons in 2018-19. The, the milk production also increased during this period. The All India average rate of growth of milk production is only 6.4. But during the last four year period, Kerala has been able to achieve 12.46% percentage growth. The LDF government is now implementing Supiksha Kerala, that means Prosperous Kerala program of rupees. 3,860 crores. This is one of the post-COVID package of recovery projects. The aim of the program is to broaden and intensify food production. The Supiksha Keralam program involves agriculture, animal resources, dairy farming, fisheries, etc. It also aims to develop value addition through industrial production. Cooperatives are encouraged 
to do processing of agricultural products, establishing cold storages, marketing, etc. The Brahmagiri Development Society in Vainad is one of such examples. It started recently online trade of value-added agricultural products by avoiding middlemen in order to ensure a remunerative price for the farmers. The Subhiksha Geralam program is also planned to cultivate all cultivable barren land in Kerala. The party units, the Kisan Sabha and Agricultural Workers Union units, the Kudumba Shri units are actively involved in cultivating all barren land in Kerala. The LDF government performance in the industrial sector. The policy pursued by the LDF government has been entirely different from the policies of the UDF and the BJP government at the center. The tactics of the UDF government was to make the public sector undertaking sick and then privatize such public sector undertakings. Now the central government is privatizing all public sector undertakings, railways, electricity, petroleum, coal, mission building, metal industry, bank, insurance, defense production, airports, etc. The LDF government, on the other hand, taking steps to strengthen the public sector undertakings. The government is taking various measures to make the public sector undertakings profitable. The government has undertaken steps such as upgradation of technology, diversification of production process, strengthening the management system, better coordination between institutions, financial streamlining, introduction of effective monitoring system, etc., etc. In 2015-16, the last year of the UDF regime, only eight public sector undertakings were making profit in Kerala. After the LDF government was formed in 2016, the number of profit-making public sector undertakings increased to 30. In 2017 and 18, that was again increased to 14, and now it went up to 17 in 2018-19. The laws of the public sector undertakings in 2016, the last year of the UDF government, was rupees 131.60 crores. Now the public sector undertakings are making a profit of 258.29 crores of rupees. The government is taking steps to further increase the production of many public sector undertakings in Kerala. When the central government took steps to privatize the public sector undertakings functioning in Kerala, the LDF government came forward and expressed its willingness to take over the take over such public sector undertakings. The Kerala Industrial Development Corporation took part in the bidding for the expansion of the Trivandrum Airport. The central government, instead of giving the airport for expansion, handed over the airport to the Adani Group. The state government has filed a case before the High Court against the decision of the central government. The case is pending. The LDF government also encouraged private sector to make investments in Kerala. Firms such as Nissan, Taurus Automotive, Tech Mahendra, Taranet, and many other will, many other firms have come forward to make investments in Kerala. The state has been able to make big progress in the IT sector. 
about 30,000 new IT professionals got employment in the expanding IT sector. 292 new firms joined the IT parks in Kerala during the last four-year period. The number of startup increased from 300 during the UDF period to 2,300. And there is also substantial increase in the investments in the IT sector also. Another important aspect of the alternate policy path of Kerala is the importance it gives to planning. Even though the central government has abandoned the planning process, the LDF government has reiterated its commitment to planning. More importantly, the model that Kerala follows is that of decentralized planning. It involves the widest form of participation and consultation. The recovery of Kerala from Oki, Nipah, two worst ever floods in Kerala, and the successful aiming of the COVID-19 pandemic are also some of the striking examples of the strength of the Kerala's planning process. Kerala is world renowned for its superior standards in healthcare, education, social and gender justice. These are the main gains of the planning process in Kerala. Let us now examine the achievements of the state government in the social sectors. Kerala is continuing its achievements in the education sector. Democratization of the education started after 1957 when the Communist Party ministry was sworn in. Comrade EMS was the chief minister. The government initiated the democratic process and that enabled the children of the poorer sections get better and higher education and that paved way for overall improvement and development of the Kerala society. During the last four years period, Kerala made great progress in the education sector. The state government has provided high-tech facilities in 45,000 classrooms in schools. In addition to this, broadband connectivity was given to 14,000 schools in Kerala. 11,242 primary schools, they were provided with high-tech labs. So the improving facilities and standard of the government schools attracted 5 lakh students from the private schools, they joined the government schools because of the rising standard of the government schools. The state government has recently announced that it will provide 5 lakh laptops to the students free who are studying in schools. As in the case of education, Kerala is continuing its progress in the health sector. The achievements in the health sector has brought down the infant mortality rate down from 10 to 7 out of 1,000 live births. This means that Kerala has been able to achieve United Nations Sustainable Development Goal targets. They set at 8 for the year 2020. In Kerala, we have been able to reduce to seven. Not only this, in the data release by the Office of the Registrar General of India with reference 2018, the infant mortality rate 
at the national level is 32. Since 2016, the strategy of the state has been to focus on improving medical care of neonates with substantial investments in major tertiary and maternity care hospitals. The number of neonate ICU beds were increased in all centers. Kerala's birth rate also reduced fractionally from 14.2 to 14.2 to 13.9. This is the lowest in the country. The maternal mortality rate in Kerala is also the lowest in India. Maternal mortality rate is measured as the number of maternal deaths per lakh live births. It varies in Indian states from 229 in Aza to 42, the lowest in Kerala. India's average maternal mortality rate is 122 for 1 lakh live births. So the state government has undertaken a program of upgrading the facilities of all primary health centers as family health centers. In all district hospitals, super specialty departments such as cardiology, cath lab facilities, nephrology, neurology, cancer care centers are provided. The medical facilities in Taluk centers have also improved. Dialysis facilities, stroke clinics, cancer care units have started in Taluk centers also. The state government has undertaken a master plan of 7,000 crores of rupees for further improving the medical care facilities in Kerala. The Kerala Infrastructure Investment Fund Board is providing loan for this master plan. Already administrative sanction has been given for starting the work. The work is in progress. The livelihood inclusion and financial empowerment mission that is called the life mission is implementing a scheme of housing for all. As part of this plan, construction and delivery of more than 2.5 lakh houses have been completed. The NDF government gave a big push, push to these social security measures. The LDF government has increased the social security pension from 600 to 1,000 in 2016 when the LDF government was formed. Every year, the LDF government is increasing 100 rupees more to this pension fund. Now the pension amount is 1,400. About 58 lakhs of people are getting this pension every month. Kerala state also provides the highest rate of minimum wages to the workers. Many of the state governments led by the BJP and the Congress, they have increased the working hours, they have reduced the wages of workers. But in Kerala, out of the 82 sectors, in 45 sectors, the wages of the workers have been raised. The work to increase in other sectors is in progress. This is the new, this is the alternative policies of the state government. The development of infrastructure facilities such as roads, railways, waterways, airports, seaports are necessary for overall development of the state. This is necessary for attracting more investments in Kerala. 
the state government has initiated infrastructure development project costing 50000 crores of rupees tfi is providing loan for this the hill highway with an investment of 3500 crore is under progress the construction of the coastal highway has started the national waterway from bekal in kasaragod to trivandrum is in the final stages the natural gas pipeline from kochi to mangalore has become a reality the high speed railway network connectivity from north to south will start soon kerala became the first state in india to provide electricity connection to every house in kerala after 2016 kerala produced an addition of 221 megawatts electricity out of this 221 megawatts 24.1 megawatt is from hydroelectric power projects 170 megawatt from solar energy sources and 27 megawatt from wind power i shall now briefly explain the covid-19 situation in kerala and the alternative policies pursued by the ldf government it's a fact that the numbers of covid-19 patients are increasing seeing this increasing number of covid patients a section of the people who acclaimed the achievements of kerala started doubting whether the kerala model in tackling covid 19 was real one or a farce the kerala model is comprised of four components one control the spread of infection two treatment of infected patients three giving relief to the people for the revival of the economy because of the various measures taken by the government i have already dealt with the revival of the economy part i shall deal the other three aspects as there is no vaccine or medicine for covid 19 it's not possible to stop the spread of covid 19 we can only control its spread the aim of the control measures is to limit the number of patients within the present available public health facilities the state government has provided 1 lakh 31606 beds in 1296 government hospitals 866 private hospitals in addition to this 2378 ventilators have also been set up both in government and private hospitals besides these facilities 20509 beds have been set up in 138 first line treatment centers at present in different parts of the country the state government also provided 30598 beds in 253 covid first line treatment centers as second stage and another 36400 beds in 480 covid first line treatment centers as a third stage is also now ready the present facilities out of the 20509 beds at present 11412 beds are vacant due to the absence of patients so the spread of covid-19 in kerala is well within the public health facilities available the rate of spread of covid-19 
is also lowest in Kerala. The treatment of COVID patients is completely free in all government hospitals. COVID test, bed, accommodation, food, ventilator, medicine, and plasma therapy, all are free in government hospitals. The rates for treatment of the private hospitals are also fixed by the state government. Out of the 47,899 COVID-19 patients, only 1,135 patients went for treatment in private hospital. That means 97.7% of the patients had chosen government hospitals for treatment. This is the facilities provided by the state government in government hospitals. The death rate of COVID patients in Kerala is also the lowest in India. The state government had launched a 20,000 crore package to provide a relief, help, and assistance to all. The state government had provided social security pension to 58 lakh beneficiaries. The different workers' welfare boards also gave an amount of 1,000 rupees each to 78 lakh workers. All BPL car holders were given an addition of 35 kilograms of rice. Above the poverty line and non priority card holders, they were also given 15 kilograms of rice free, a total of 87.59 lakh kits containing essential items were distributed free of charge to all card holders. Now the chief minister has announced that free rice will be distributed to 88 lakh card holders in the coming four months period. If we look at the overall situation in Kerala, Kerala is preparing for a big jump in the productive sector, infrastructure facilities, social sectors such as education, health, as well as social security measures. Kerala tops all other states in India in progress towards United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. As announced by Niti Ayo, Kerala stands first in poverty eradication, health and better living conditions, industrial development, implementation of modern ideas, etc. Kerala also stands first with other states in education, gender equality, eradication of hunger and inequality. The alternative policies pursued by the LDF government have enabled Kerala to achieve these gains. Now I shall try to explain the united move of the Congress, the BJP, the extremist elements both among the majority and minority communities and the right-wing media to subvert the LDF government. The reasons are very clear. The prestige of the LDF government, the prestige of the LDF, and the prestige of the Communist Party of India Marxist is rising. They fear that their future will be bleak if LDF succeeds. They are desperate. They want to show that the LDF government is a failure. They want to show that there is no alternative to neoliberal economic policies. They want to defeat the attempts of the LDF government to pursue alternative policies. They want to weaken the opposition 
against the neoliberal economic policies, which is gaining strength at the All India level. The Congress, the BJP, and the right wing media are opposed to the revival of the left and democratic forces at the All India level. Their desperation is evident in all their moves. They try to obstruct all developmental activities, COVID 19 control measures, and even flood control measures in Kerala. Every day, they appear before the media with new lies. They not only repeat lies thousand times, as Joseph Goebbels, Minister of Propaganda in the Hitler's cabinet, had suggested. The opposition parties are also spreading thousand lies every day, hoping that at least one of them may be believed as true by the people. The gold smuggling case is one such example. In July, nearly 35 kilograms of gold was seized from a diplomatic baggage addressed to the United Arab Emirates Consulate at the Trivandrum Airport. It is the responsibility of the Customs Department to seize all smuggled goods. Smuggling is taking place in many airports all over India. The state government has no role in the airports. The Customs Department, the Immigrations Department, the CSF, they are all under the control of the central government. They are responsible in airport. In this case, it was found that one Sapna Suresh, a contract employee in a project under a public limited company called Kerala State Information Technology Infrastructure Limited under the IT's department was involved in the smuggling. When it was revealed she was immediately removed from the project and a police case was registered against her for producing fabricated documents for proving her educational qualifications. A senior IAS officer who is responsible to oversee the work of the company and IT department was immediately removed from all positions and was later suspended. The Chief Minister of Kerala wrote a letter to the Prime Minister asking for investigation into the smuggling case in order to bring all the culprits before law. The party and the LDF have nothing to hide. Now the NIA is investigating in the case. Nobody in the party or in the LDF is found to be involved in the smuggling or any irregularity related to the smuggling. Some of the persons arrested in the case, they are related to the BJP. Despite all these, the UDF, the BJP, and a section of the media are continuing with their baseless allegations against the LDF government. The second issue is the construction of 140 houses and a health center for the flood affected victims. Immediately after the floods, Red Crescent, an affiliated of the Red Cross and Red Crescent societies in United Arab Emirates, they signed an Memorandum of Understanding with the Life Mission agreeing to construct 140 houses and a health center. The Red Crescent entrusted the construction work with Unitech, a construction company. The government 
or the life mission has nothing to do with the contract of the red crescent with the construction company the controversy is that the construction company had paid a commission to sapna suresh for getting the contract government or the life mission has no role in the contract between the red crescent and the construction company even then the opposition is continuing their baseless allegations against the ldf government the other issue raised is the issue of technical consultancies engaged by the government some of the projects undertaken by the government need new forms of technical expertise technical consultancies are selected through transparent procedures they are given specific terms of reference and their advice is evaluated by the government for the for its relevance and suitability to the needs of the state this is the standard international and national practice the state government is strictly following this practice the effort of the opposition and the right wing media is to confuse people by raising irrelevant and unconnected issues in order to tarnish tarnish the growing prestige of the ndf government certainly the people in kerala will defeat these efforts of the congress the bjp and the right wing media to subvert the only government which pursue non neo liberal economic and social development policies in the country we are confident that the left and democratic forces in the country will stand with the people of kerala in their fight against the enemies of the ldf government and its alternative policies with this i conclude my speech i thank you all for your patient hearing